perfect thank you all for joining today uh, my name is prashant uh, uh, i'll be your host today for the session all about salesforce business analyst so all through the session feel free to post on twitter and let the people know what you're learning okay you can tag us uh, with the hashtag uh, with the ad tags and you can follow us as well for more such content in the near future uh, i will just mention this as well in the chat of the event as well so about me, I'm uh, my name is Prashant Vardhan. Uh, I'm a technical lead at Apistoki. I'm 15 times Salesforce certified consultant. I'm a MuleSoft certified as well. I'm a community group leader, Trailhead mentor as well. Okay, so that's my Twitter tag, uh, Twitter uh, at mention, and uh, my LinkedIn profile as well. Feel free to follow me, or uh, you know, you have any questions, uh, probably about any anything other than the current topic as well. Feel free to DM me. I'm, I'll be really helpful on that. So about today's speaker, uh, Gaurav Pratap Singh, he's a Salesforce certified business analyst. He's a multi-cloud consultant. He works on uh, uh, multi-cloud uh, technologies uh, inside Salesforce. And he's a community speaker, Salesforce enthusiast, and a blogger as well. You can follow him on the Twitter uh, with the ad tag, and uh, you can connect with him on LinkedIn as well. Uh, with this, I'll just quickly hand over uh, the screen to Gaurav and uh, Gaurav, you can take over. Thank you, Prashant, for uh, such a beautiful introduction. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to have everyone here. And uh, meanwhile, I'm sharing my screen. Uh, Happy New Year to all of you. I really appreciate you taking out time on Wednesday and joining us today to learn about us, what exactly a Salesforce Business Analyst is. So let's not waste much time and move ahead uh, with the introduction. And uh, let's see. Our agenda just today is all about who is a business analyst, uh, roles and responsibilities and skills of business analyst, Scrum and Kanban at Salesforce. Let's uh, meet a Salesforce business analyst and know about their skills. And apart from that, we will learn like what's the difference between a business analyst and an admin. And at the end, we will learn like how we can start a uh, preparation for Salesforce business analyst certification. So let's move ahead and uh, get an initial introduction. Like what exactly is a business analyst? Let's not focus on the text that is written on the presentation. Let me give you a life scenario for the same. For example, let, uh, let us imagine everyone, all of you is a business analyst in your organization. And for example, uh, your company is looking out for opportunities and the business that are looking to implement Salesforce and they are looking for the partners who can implement Salesforce for their businesses. So let us uh, imagine a scenario, a lead comes for you, a person is working on sales cloud and uh, they have a sales cloud business and they want us to implement uh, their business onto the Salesforce. So as an organization, they accept the lead and as a business analyst, you are given the task to perform certain analysis on their website. For example, imagine Nike is trying to, you know, put up their business with Salesforce and uh, we want to show them like what Salesforce capabilities are and how we can enhance their business using Salesforce. That's where a business analyst comes in the play. It's the light scenario where business analyst is like a link between the developers that will work uh, on the project and between and uh, the clients that you are dealing with. So let's go on uh, like textual information like a business analyst is the person who helps businesses to analyze their processes products, services, and systems to improve the current processes and make profitable decisions through the insights. So as you have read there, businesses can be on processes. There are multiple businesses who are selling products, some are selling services, and we have a wide criteria in our Salesforce to offer clouds as per the businesses. Next, uh, we have business analyst also helps organization to document business processes by assessing the business model and its integration with technology. So Nike comes to you and wants uh, uh, tells you about the requirements. A business analyst uh, analyst have to make sure that you document everything. You as a business analyst, you have to be good at the communication part when it comes to you know get the uh, requirement from your client. And the second thing is uh, you have to be up to mark on a documentation process. For example, uh, let's imagine you had a meeting with Nike and you want to you know, note down some points. 
that you can share with the developers and they can go through the requirements without any you know verbal communication and then once they are ready with your notes and they have gone through the requirement you can set up a meeting to discuss like how things will be implemented so this is a practical scenario how business analyst performs uh, something in in, a, in the in their day to day life <laughs> So the primary job responsibility of a business analyst is to communicate with all stakeholders to elicit. Elicit here means to ask question, to understand like what clients want for us to implement and analyze and validate. So, for example, client tells you a requirement and you want to perform an analysis on your end because you are not sure like what exactly they want. Sometimes we get stuck with third party integrations where we have to check on the websites like uh, where we have to check on the website where uh, actually we have to implement it, how it will be implemented. Is it available on App Exchange or do we need an API? So that's where a business analyst had to be good at, uh, you know, analyzing things, analyzing the requirements, like how it will be performed. Uh, next is we have the foremost priority. Any business analyst will uh, be try to understanding the following things. And let's imagine just we talk about a scenario. For a, uh, for a company joining us and wants to know like how we will implement Salesforce for them. So they will have to first initially understand what their business does and how they do it. Next, we have determined how to improve existing process. So we are business analysts and we are assumed to be the people who understand business and tell the client like how you can improve it and how uh, we can help you to improve it. Next, we have identified the steps or tasks to support the implementation of the new features, design the new features to implement, analyze the impact of uh, implementing new features, implement uh, implementing the new features. So you can uh, read here the most part is running around the businesses and the features that you are uh, understanding for your requirements. Next up, we have a day like uh, we all must be curious, like what a business analyst days looks like. So in the morning, we start with, uh, you know, brainstorming requirements, like how we can provide a solution to a certain requirement. When we when our client is asking us that to perform in the implementation, we gain an understanding of the organization business processes relevant to the project goals. So whenever it comes to, you know, providing information uh, from the client ends, they always tell you requirements like what they want to perform and you are the person who can guide them like how this will be performed. Next, we have working cooperations with their project manager. Our business analyst always will be having a project manager whose role will be solely based, uh, you can say, uh, on the wider picture, like how a project uh, will end up, like what are the impediments and what are the risks. You just have to be the communication link between the client and the developers so that you can provide the best, uh, you can say, implemented solution to your project managers and then they can uh, deliver it to the clients. And at the last, we have document processes to help refine the problem the project is trying to solve. So honestly, uh, if I speak about myself, I've been uh, like uh, on, on our daily basis, I have to work a lot on the Microsoft Office. It could be Word, it could be PowerPoint presentations and uh, it could be Notepad. So we have to perform everything in a way so that we can document it and not document it and just implement our creativity as well in it. The more we, you know, make it creative, the more it impresses the client. That's our duty somewhere, you know, to convert the more leads to opportunity. And that's how we do it. We keep everything detailed in our documents while we are having meetings. We make uh, minutes of meetings where we cover the requirements that uh, our client is, you know, telling us like what they want, how they want it. And that's what we mentioned uh, in our documents, the pain points, because that's where clients realizes that uh, this implementation and, you know, how they will perform it will help us. Next, uh, we have roles and responsibilities. So a general business analyst performs the following roles and responsibilities. It's analyzing and evaluating current business processes. So we have already discussed it. They have to ask questions, analyze, evaluate, and, uh, you know, perform various, uh, we can say meetings, multiple meetings in a scenario when they have a large implementation. Second, we have researching, reviewing, and uh, up-to-date business processes and new IT advancements to make the systems more, uh, you can say, 
more modern because a business analyst have to be updated with the modern trend because since we are in Salesforce ecosystem and uh, we all are aware about the fact that we uh, get things improved on a regular basis. So a business analyst is expected to have, you know, informed about every releases that happens so that whenever it comes to a part when client is asking for certain implementation or a feature which was not available previously, but it it is available now. And, uh, you know, that's how we keep up with technology to, you know, perform the best business, business analysis and provide the best uh, opportunities to our organization. Next, we have presenting ideas and findings in the meeting. A business analyst is expected to perform an analysis before the meeting so that they can cover up the points, what they have to ask, what they have to, you know, focus more towards. For example, some businesses have bad sales process, so we can, you know, tell us about the lead procedure, how we can, you know, create custom stages as per their businesses and which will somewhere enhance and bring more business uh, to a certain client. Next, we have training and coaching staff members. Uh, I personally have encountered many scenarios where uh, clients are not very much aware about uh, what Salesforce actually is. And uh, as a business analyst, we, we it's our duty, you know, it's our duty to explain our client and, you know, give a brief to them, like how actually Salesforce works. So in that way, they feel comfortable when they want to do business with, with you because they realize the importance that the person the business analyst you are educating the client initially like what salesforce is and then telling him how we can implement it in order to enhance their business and bring more revenue towards them next we have creating initiative depending on the business requirements and needs like if we uh, if we are encountering a situation where we can suggest something client a, a great initiative maybe a new lead source we are suggesting to our client like you can bring leads from social media handles because this business is doing good on social media that's how we can create initiatives depending on the business requirements and needs next we have developing projects uh, and monitoring project performance yeah that's what happens in a live scenario if we are working with the client we have to you know work with developers in order to manage project and also monitor the project performance because you have to tell your project manager like how the business is actually working so that they can communicate the respective information with the client next we have collaborating with users and stakeholders so uh, as a ba we are expected to you know be uh, open with communication open asking questions we should know the icebreakers uh, for example, if I if I tell you a live scenario, uh, imagine we have a client from England and uh, our weather is cold in England and they love football. Let's imagine a random scenario and they mostly love maybe Manchester United. So you when you don't know like how to start an initial conversation with the client, you can simply use these icebreakers in order to break a conversation. And initially, uh, you'll get comfortable while you can have conversation. And that's when we create a bond with clients so that whenever we ask too many questions during the requirement gathering, client have the satisfaction that this person wants to go to the detail what I want. And I'm expecting the same that this will be implemented. So that's how we, you know, use this collaboration power with users and stakeholders. Next, uh, working closely with senior management, partner, clients and technicians. In order to, you know, uh, for the smooth running of the project, we have to work closely with the senior management, uh, our partners, the clients definitely, because they are the one who are telling us the requirement. And uh, in order to, you know, technicians, uh, it could be our developers. And we can also have developers from the client ends as well, because sometimes uh, client, client is having a team with developers, so it might uh, be a good to have a discussion with the development team as well, like how they are looking forward to implement the businesses. So uh, there are terms, there are method methodologies that we use while we are performing, you can say business analysts or managing a project. So what happens is uh, we have two scenarios in the Salesforce, Scrum and Kanban. So you can read that values of Scrum are focus, courage, openness, commitment, and respect. So uh, let me give you a brief about this. Instead of people working independently on different work items, uh, we can collaborate on everything we do. As a team, we decide certain work items that we have to work on and we focus on them for a week maybe. And with, we set 
priorities. For example, I assigned a task to our team and we have a fixed timeline for a week to finish those tasks. So that's where our focus works on. Next, we have courage. So there is a saying like taking risk is a key ingredient to innovation and uh, being risky takes courage. So when promoting this kind of courage, we ask our team to be transparent about progress, speak up when they need help, any kind of a help they need, report back when assumptions were wrong. Because many times we assume something and it turned out to be wrong. So a team should be open up to have this conversation. Like I expected this thing and it turned out to be wrong. So this is where the courage comes in place. Next, we have openness. So transparency is the key to promote collaboration and success. Here are a few uh, you know, ways we can uh, maintain openness as we work together as one team. We constantly verbalize how we are doing. So, for example, we five or six friends are working on same project, and we currently uh, we are currently talking about like what progress is going on, how we can uh, you know improve at this system. If we have certain roadblocks or something, uh, if some impediments we have to make. So that's how a team should be open to communicate. Like if whatever they have ongoing with the project, they should be good with it. Next, we have commitment. When team commits to a process, they are more in control of the outcomes. I have seen this in the life, uh, real life examples as well. When we commit to something and uh, we really want to achieve it, we work hard towards it and somewhere uh, in the near future, we definitely achieve it with flying colors. So if we just have to keep trust in our team in order to, you know, all the time that we invested on the overall success should turn out to be good. And at last, uh, we have respect. So it's uh, like the best pillar of sp Scrum because we have different hierarchy. We can have, you know, multiple stages or levels of the, uh, you can say, uh, designations why we work on. We can, uh, we can have business analyst, then we have project manager, then we have team manager. So in these scenarios, we should always keep respect. And as well as I would love to tell you that we, if we keep uh, respect in our team that we are working with, and follow these values of the scrum uh, it's a uh, it's it's really best practice when it comes to uh, delivering the projects and uh, whenever you go out in the world these values always will help you because in every scenario i have find these uh, values really helpful whereas in kanban we have visualized workflow where a workflow is divided up into pieces and each written onto a card that is placed on a wall so let me ask you a random question. Like all you have seen a, a picture maybe where you have a board uh, where you are putting up sticky notes on different sections. Like uh, you have a section like uh, requirement gathering, then you have implementation, then you have UAT, then you have testing. So in these scenarios, that's where uh, Kanban comes into the play. In the further slides, I'll show you practically how it exactly looks. So in, uh, the next stage we have is limit work in progress. So teams are placed uh, in the limitations on how many work items are, uh, are in progress at one time in each workflow stage. So we create uh, different stages and we assign a certain you know limit. We, we, we may assign five tasks in that, uh, you can say, uh, package. And that's where uh, it comes in play. Uh, next way we have incremental and evolution, uh, evolutionary changes. Unlike Scrum, which is a process that calls for far-reaching shifts in work process, Kanban lets team embrace smaller and more changes along the way. So because everything is on the board, you are updated about like what is currently going on and what is the next step and what items which, uh, which we have completed already. Last we have Kanban includes metrics. There are a few uh, measurements used in Kanban, which is lead time, which is the average time to complete one team, one, one item, sorry, uh, let me correct it again, which is uh, lead time, which is average time to complete one item. For example, it's a task. It could be a task. Maybe it could be a module, complete one item. Sometimes it's called a cycle time. This helps team, you know, optimize the process to make lead time as small, as predictable as possible. Throughput is somewhere we defined as the amount of work completed in a single period of time. So these are the like values or you can say key traits or these are the terms which you will get to hear if you're working in a business analyst environment. Next, we have uh, 
you know some a few more information to be clear about more about scrum and kanban it's to in scrum we deliver or demo something every sprint uh, for example imagine you are implementing sales cloud and uh, you have a sprint of uh, two weeks and uh, the client will get the ready-made project after five weeks so you have you know uh, five weeks of time and you have sprint of two weeks then two weeks then you have one week of uat and testing so let's imagine this scenario we have implemented something on the sales cloud initial setup and the configuration as per the client's requirement and when uh, the sprint is ended we are performing a demo so that team can gather a feedback about you know deliverables requirements and if everything is good with the feature that you have implemented or a module that has been implemented during the sprint that's great uh, you can prepare the deliverables and you can move it move the respective modular item to the production environment where is in Kanban? Work is divided up into pieces, each written onto a card that is placed on the wall. It could be either physical or virtual. The workflow is mapped into the columns, illustrating where each item is in the workflow. So you can imagine a board in your head where you have items written on a sticky note and uh, you are putting up on the board as per the sections they are on it. Next, under Scrum, we continuously improve ourselves, the team, and the outcome every day in the, every sprint. Because uh, in Scrum, we follow feedback from the client a lot so that we can make changes while we are implementing it. That saves us a lot of time and also brings quality to the implementation. Teams, uh, where is in Kanban? Teams places limitation on how many work items are in progress at one time in each workflow stage. For example, you have a stage of implementation on your Kanban board and there is a column where you have limited, uh, you know, work items assigned for a certain time. And if they, these items hit a limit, they help each other out by tackling things as a team to unblock them. That's how the Kanban, uh, you know, works. And under Scrum, we have assembled a competent team and let them let the team make all the decision because we have Scrum Masters and, uh, you know, every person have a dedicated role so they can play accordingly when they are under a uh, scrum team unlike scrum under kanban which is a process that calls for a far-reaching shift work process kanban lets meet embrace smaller and more changes along the way so imagine a scenario where you have a board uh, and you have created very very few small items like for example creating an object creating a field so that you can you know, uh, keep the changes smaller and gather the client feedback more often so that uh, if anything comes up with a scenario where you want to change the field name, you can, you know, simply just go ahead and do it because that's the only thing you just implemented five minutes ago and client provided the required feedback. And at the last, we have appoint one person to track and ensure barriers are removed and appoint one person to set work agendas and prioritize projects for teams so that the team is focused on what is important. So this is a practice, like I have also followed this practice in the projects that I have implemented. I have always appointed one person to track and ensure the barriers because they are looking at the bigger picture. They are not following, uh, you can say the sprints that we are implementing. They are looking at the future perspectives. For example, we implemented an object and we created a master detail relationship, which might can com conflict with the business in the future. So that's where this person comes into the play. And the second person we appointed is uh, the one person to set the work, uh, work ag agendas because every day Scrum uh, team gets a meeting where we can uh, we set up the agenda for the day, like what work items we have pending, what product backlog we have, and that's how you know, we move forward with this. Next, we have, you know, there are a few measurement systems used in Kanban, which is a lead time, average time to complete one item. And uh, the next is throughput, defined as the amount of the work complete did in a single period of time. So next uh, we have scrum process uh, here. I'll give a brief about like what exactly happens. So you can see a wheel and we are imagining a scenario that our project implementation is of two to four weeks. And let's uh, have stages where we have review, implementation, planning, retrospect, definition done, sprint backlog, and uh, the roles that uh, takes place is in, in this are developers, you know, admins, scrum master, product owner, and the uh, user stories. 
So I just uh, I'll give a, a brief about like what exactly a Scrum Master does. A Scrum Master uh, is required to be responsible for sprint planning, review, and re retrospective daily. Where a uh, retrospective is just we go back in time when we check like what task we have left behind during the implementation, and we perform a meeting to assign these work items in the upcoming implementation. Uh, next, I'll tell you much about uh, you know product owner. So the product owner is actually accountable for effective product backlog management, which actually includes developing and explicitly communicating the product goal with the team, creating and clearly communicating product backlog items, ordering uh, product backlog items to assign to the team and ensuring that the product backlog is transparent, visible and understood to everyone. So everybody is, you know, confused about like what a uh, backlog is actually. So let's assume a uh, sprint backlog. A uh, sprint backlog basically is a list of work items of your team plans to complete during a project sprint. So let's assume you are having a two weeks of sprint and you have 10 tasks assigned to complete during this sprint. So this is what your sprint backlog is. And next, uh, we have sprint review. Sprint review review is a stage where we, uh, you know, get a feedback from clients. We review everything that we have implemented in order to check like what uh, the requirements were and how we have presented the same things to the client. In the specific terms, you know, uh, the Scrum definition of done that uh, we are seeing as the uh, end of the stage of this process, the definition of done is the list of conditions that must be met to be successfully mark a product increment as complete. So when a project arrives uh, and if we are following the scrum process, we mark certain benchmarks, for example, uh, you can say acceptance criteria is maybe a word, but it, it couldn't be right to put it there. But certain items, so a checklist, which uh, you will, uh, you know, check at the end of the deliverability of the project. And that's when you can consider it done as the definition of done when we are using Scrum process. Next, uh, this is an example of the Kanban process. Uh, so you can see scenario, there is a board on it and uh, Scrum, uh, you know, sorry, Kanban is all about visualizing your work. It's just you have a visual picture of what you are working and what stages you are on while you are implementing it. And, uh, you know, uh, what happens Kanban in, in the Kanban is you limit your work in progress and maximize the efficiency using the Kanban flow. Kanban teams focuses on reducing the time a project takes from start to finish. So you have a board in front of you every day when you comes to office because you are managing a project with a Kanban view. And uh, you can say, see the stages on the picture. It's ready in progress, blocked, ready for review and done. So this is how we classify our work items. This is how we classify our pro product backlog. In, in this way, we, you know, calculate our sprints, like what task, for example, in the in progress, we have four tasks that developer has to done and three tasks that test, uh, testing uh, part has to done has to be done so this is how we assign a sprint you know we put up a week uh, on our clock and we assign these tasks to the team and we wait for their feedback and you know anything that comes up as a roadblock we put it in the block stage so that's how you manage a project in a kanban process so uh, uh, so let me know i'll take a pause here if you have any questions on this and uh, We'll move ahead or we move ahead with let's uh, meet a sales for business analyst. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead with uh, let's meet a sales for business analyst. A sales force business analyst is a project based business improvement role. So, you know, you get the idea after, you know, after the introduction that we had together, we know the idea that's a project based business improvement. We have to work on a project and we, as well as we have to improve the business. So that's how a business analyst works. We help guide businesses to improve their processes and efficiency in Salesforce. Imagine a scenario you are suggesting a client like uh, they are having a sales business of uh, selling cars maybe and they have a website where you can perform customization. 
so how you can ease the process for the clients as well as uh, the business stakeholders so in this way we perf- we know we uh, suggest them the features and we perform our analysis in order to you know give them an idea of uh, how you can uh, deliver the best products after considering the requirements the main task that a business analyst or you can say we have to perform in uh, is elicit document and analyze the requirement around the business challenges because every business in today's scenario is somewhere facing a challenge and if we can uh, you know guess it right we can suggest it to our clients and you know present it as the pain point for their businesses and it will increase the chances of uh, you know converting into the opportunity and then we produce the data driven solution so our solutions should be data driven they should know what exactly what uh, we are talking about and how we will implement it so uh, it will create an understanding and an environment of an open communication between you and the client and we have to think of as a you know sales or business analyst like an interpreter because uh, as i mentioned earlier many of the times you have to create uh, you know training materials when you are implementing some feature or a module for a client in order to help them to understand like what feature we have implemented and how it can be tested if you are working as a client next uh, let's little bit more uh, are just line that i got from multiple sources they are the go to person when it comes to actually you know com- comes to communicate between it and business stakeholders to ensure all the involved work together to attain the best results so uh, every time a business you know or company wants to you know work with the biz- uh, you know comes to you for the implementation part you are the go to person who will perform or communicate with the client to understand what they want you know how they want it and you will communicate the same the requirements to your developers or the team who will be implementing the project so there are few specific steps that uh, you know takes place uh, generally in all the projects with a slight variation so uh, the items that we have that we get in every project as a business analyst are communication it's the biggest part it could be uh, you are communicating on the emails you are communicating on, communicating on slack it could be whatsapp if it's out the outside the system it could be linkedin whatever it is we have to be effective on the communication part always acknowledge your clients when they are sending you an email in in an order to you know let them know that you have received the response and you will get uh, get the feedback to them as soon as possible next we have elicitation elicitation uh, plays an important role for a salesforce business analyst because we have to ask a lot of questions in order to know like what client is exactly uh, wanting from us how their business work how they get leads how they convert opportunities what information they want from a client from a certain you know website they have web forms it could be social media uh, from from where the lead is coming and there are multiple sources so we have to ask all the questions in order to understand everything to an instant or a detail uh, to you know prepare a good requirement document or a proposal that we can deliver to client next we have documenting requirements yeah this is what i was talking about you have to keep everything in detail when we are documenting the requirements next we have analyzing information we have to uh, understand the requirements as well as we have to analyze the inf- information that we get from the client for example client is you know referring to some other business which is already implemented in salesforce and uh, they want to copy them or maybe giving a suggestion like so we want something uh, similar to this but more effective or more efficient so that's where we should be good at analyzing all the information we should uh, create mom's in order to you know provide our clients feedback provide feedback to the team and uh, so that client is aware that you are working on the concern that they discussed earlier next we have implementing solutions uh, implementing solutions is on the part that we as a business analyst when a solution has been done for example an admin has created an object or a field or you are aware about the fact that how an object or a field can be created so that's how we suggest a client 
on the call on the meeting on the same time when they are asking a question that they want to store you can say uh billing and shipping address and they want to store another address they want to create a field for address another field for address so you can suggest them that it can be done easily you can simply create a custom field for the all the information that you want from from the uh, from the user and you can save it there and at last uh, it's testing because sometimes we have to perform uat uat stands for uh, user analysis testing where we uh, as a user we perform uh, you know uh, testing at our end of a certain feature so that we provide the best deliverable product to the client and uh, they don't face any issue while they are testing it so let's move forward with uh, required soft and technical skills because uh, it's just a brief idea like what a sales for business analyst requires it it is analytical skills in uh, in the soft skills part requirement gathering skills you know a, a ba as per uh, to be frank if i say a ba should be really uh, you know talkative but not too much but they should be uh, you know continuously conversing with the clients and asking questions uh, about like uh, how they want it if they have any third party integration what exact objects they want to sync with salesforce every little information that can be useful for you to create a you know best book proposal that will impress the client and a client will want to implement and go ahead with you for uh, you know implementation next uh, in the soft skill part we have communication and collaboration uh, it's a, it is very important part because we have to continuously communicate and collaborate with our stakeholders uh, you know in a, in a project life cycle we have to uh, get get you know we have to be in continuous communication meetings and we can say stand ups uh, feedback loop with the clients so that we can collaborate with the stakeholders and understand what exactly they want from us because sometimes certain feature is good and the other uh, client is impressed and as a feedback they want to add another feature on front of it and they'll tell you for the same so that's when you can make clients comfortable and get more business out of it because you can show them that you can definitely go ahead and make their creativity creativity and implement it on the salesforce next up uh, some technical skills we have on the flow and process diagramming because uh, as a business analyst we are expected to present everything in a more efficient way and so that people can understand uh, understand in a better way and uh, everyone will agree with me because everyone likes uh, you know pictorial uh, representation a graphical or maybe a pictorial representation rather than a textual representation so that's where we can you know explain to our clients how a process flow works and how a process diagramming you know can be done we can create flows where uh, we can show this this way client will log in and they can move ahead while the process is working so that they know step by step what we have to perform and how it will be working when it is implemented next is wireframing uh, it's it's an uh, you know it's important skill we have to create wireframes for example uh, we are creating a salesforce application it's a really good example imagine a scenario when you are implementing a salesforce mobile app for a client who wants to sell properties and uh, the client wants to you know display the houses on the salesforce mobile application so that the salesperson who are uh, you know out on the run and uh, you know sales executive who are walking around and uh, you know showing people houses they can log all the details they get uh, from uh, from from the clients they want to sell house to so this is how we can create wireframes like how app will look like on the android and ios devices what features will be implemented what taps uh, will be there on the salesforce mobile application so this is what uh, wireframing is all about we are basically showing the interface to the client on the mobile devices or you can say on the website depends on like ipads depends on where he wants uh, it to display next we have business data analytics uh, for example we have a project from financial industry and the company is uh, shell selling insurance policies so we should be aware about the business data analytics like how this business is performing what other companies are doing uh, in order to you know be efficient and uh, deliver the best to their clients it could be a journey it could be automation it could be marketing 
So we should be aware about all these business data analytics because honestly, if you uh, suggest these things to the clients during the meetings, they are really impressed because they give it a personal touch. You went through the requirements, you analyze the market, you analyze the analytics, how the business works. And that's where, you know, it increases our chances of getting a prospect to an opportunity. And at last we have documentation. And under the documentation, uh, it could be your developers uh, creating architecture of the systems. You have to facilitate them. You have to create a template maybe to, you know, show, uh, show and deliver the architecture to the client. And that's where the documentation part comes into play. Uh, we'll discuss more on the documentation. I have a picture ahead. And there are some features, some Salesforce skills required that uh, i have encountered personally that we should be aware if we are uh, under the line or we are planning to become an uh, business a salesforce business analyst first of all it's app exchange i hope uh, if most of you are aware about app exchange it's just like a play store or uh, you can say just like a play store we have uh, in our android or you can say apple store for it's just a salesforce dedicated app exchange store where we get uh, ready to use solutions. It, it has a wide variety of applications because as a business analyst, we should be aware about, uh, you know, applications that are going through in the market because most of the applications are free and uh, somewhere you can, you know, earn stars in front of your clients by suggesting them an application which is free and, and it fulfills their requirement. Next, we have uh, automation. We should be aware about workflow process builder, and uh, like how automation actually works uh, in the Salesforce, it could be flows. You can explain uh, a scenario to your client, like you can create a flow to get leads from the web into your system. And uh, you can follow certain stages or uh, important uh, fields, some required fields or information that you want. And that's how uh, we can explain to our clients automation. Next, we have collaboration. We talked about it earlier. We have to be, you know, continuously in conversation and collaborate and uh, let our stakeholders know that you are really working towards imp improving their business process and providing the best solution next we have data management uh, data import and export we should be aware about data loader and the other tools that data import wizard as well that we use uh, to import and export data in and outside the salesforce and we should also be aware about the crm system if a client is asking, uh, you know, a system which is outside Salesforce, if there is a possible way we can, you know, import the data from it. Next, we have reports and dashboard. In today's uh, scenario, I have seen a lot of businesses who uh, really start their day while looking at their dashboards and reports, like what we have performed so far, where we are lacking behind, which product, which business, which surface, uh, which services or you can say uh, which scenario, which uh, person who is uh, getting delayed to deliver the lead. You can track everything with the reports and dashboards. So, uh, as a BA, as a Salesforce BA, we should be aware about reports and dashboard and we can let them know all the features that, uh, you know, that can enhance their solution deliverability and they can, uh, you know, start off their way with creative dashboards that, that you create for them. Next, we have CRM functionality and uh, object management. Salesforce, uh, the world's number one CRM. We all are aware about this. So we should be aware like how a CRM works. What is a CRM? How we can, you know, enhance our client's business using a, using a CRM functionality. And next uh, we have object management. So uh, we all are aware about like leads, accounts, contacts, uh, opportunities, tasks, activity, campaigns, and these all are the Salesforce objects. We should know, like uh, we should be aware about object management system, how we can create custom objects and how we can, you know, I'm sorry, how we can uh, create object uh, objects, custom objects, fields, custom fields, and uh, give all the required information to the clients they are asking for. Next, uh, we have extensive, we should have extensive platform knowledge. We should be aware about uh, organization while default security measures and all the little things. It could be governor limits. Uh, sometimes I have encountered like I have to express to the client that certain feature cannot be implemented due to, uh, due, uh, due to the Salesforce governor limits. So 
that's where extensive platform knowledge comes in the play uh, next uh, we have sales and marketing tactics so we should uh, be you know a little bit good at uh, pre sales conversation where we are suggesting the client like how salesforce can be good for their business how it's a great fit if they want to you know get a uh, 360 view of the customer with single source of truth and uh, it's amazing uh, you know because sometimes clients are not aware about like what exactly salesforce is so that's where it comes in the picture you can uh, pitch them like what are the six crm functionality is along with all the licenses information clouds that are available and could be the best fit for their implementation and uh, lastly we have salesforce user management and uh, awareness about salesforce security so we all should be uh, aware about like salesforce user management we have encountered scenarios where we are you know uh, freezing the users providing them permission sets and creating a user or deleting a user so that's where user management comes in the play because users are like the heart and soul of the salesforce these are the people who are managing this and sometimes we also have to create hierarchies based on the organization's uh, you can say a business model so that's where also user management comes into the play and next says for security and it's really important that we should suggest and always suggest our clients about multi factor authentication it has been you know uh, evident now that we need multi factor authentication in order to keep our data secure and it's a great feature and we should keep our clients posted on about say how they can you know uh keep their data protected how salesforce security can be a really useful tool uh it can also you know you can also add about salesforce shield and data markups data masking so it could up it it's all up to you what information you have in your head and what a uh, client is asking for and that's where you can you know awareness can help you to provide the best suggestions next uh, we have the roles and responsibilities of uh, you know salesforce business analysts it's just not much difference from what we have read earlier but a little bit brief i'd like to go through on this one so first of all we have analyzing every information so a ba dive into every key data insights fact to discover what actions to take for their business uh, ultimate success so we have to go through to every minute detail of an implementation or a requirement because uh, sometimes uh, you get to know from many help articles are available on salesforce these uh, these all the help articles are somewhere was a requirement of a client so that's where you know it comes into the play either we don't find a solution we find a work around of the process so that's where as a ba we have to analyze every information so again elicitation they are required to set up the foundation of a project by asking a lot of questions a lot of questions is the favorite thing here you have to keep asking questions but, but make sure your client don't get frustrated because uh, you don't ask too many question you can you know as a solution you can set up multiple meetings of you know a limited time period so that you can have all the information on you and also your client is not frustrated and at the end of the day you both guys are happy so this is where its elicitations comes from and next we have documentation or requirements a salesforce bas are required to document every input action outcome exchanged between the team departments so that the stakeholders could look into it so why documentation i have seen uh, in the practical scenarios for uh, imagine a project is working from last one year and all the documentation on the requirements or associated meetings is kept safe in a in a folder named on the project so that in future whenever your client ask like this uh, feature was not covered in the scope so you can pull up the document and show to them that this was covered in the initial scope in implementation so that's where you can uh, you know keep yourself on the best part of the implementation so that you have the track everything that has been communicated that has been told to the client all the information that you have received from the client and that's the reason why uh, we should you know keep the documentation on the requirements very important part the communication uh, we have gone through a lot of times through the communication part so it's just we have to be the bridge between the developers and the clients so that everything works in the smooth flow 
uh, next we have planning and implementing great solutions so so we are expected to you know create project plans where we uh, display to our clients like how in what manner we will implement the great solution and how we are planning it to it planning to do it and in this manner we can ask the client for the feedback like uh, if there are certain changes they want in the planning or implementation so that you can improve it and change it and you can start and move ahead with the work and at last we have measuring and testing so we have to measure every implementation we have to check uh, like if every uh, if all the users that uh, wanted to uh, access to a certain object as per the requirement is working or not we have to double check everything that her tester uh, has been tested because we are somewhere accountable for delivering the solution to the client and uh, whenever we ask for the client for the uat when the when when we ask like uh, please perform a testing at your end we have to make sure like we have tested the feature multiple times or maybe one or two or three times if it's working good to make sure that nothing uh, is going to be bad on on the implementation part and client will be happy and will provide a good feedback to you so we heard documentations a lot of times so uh, let me give you a quick brief like what exactly documentations we require uh, during the implementation so firstly we have uh, you know business analysis plan what we have learned uh, what we have understood from the requirements we can create user stories user stories are somewhere uh, considered as the acceptance criteria for the features that uh, your team has implemented for the client for example uh, i have created a field uh, email for my web to lead form and uh, that email field is very required so if i want to create a user story on this the acceptance criteria will go like this as a user i will be able to uh, fill the email field and i cannot leave it blank because it's required and i'll submit that field and my information will be sent to the salesforce system so in this way uh, as a user what will be performed and how it will be performed this is how a user story works next we have use cases uh, sometimes we have to perform uh, implementation along with the use cases so that we can uh, provide a very clear picture of the implementation or of the feature with the you know a real life scenario with an example of a real life scenario like how this will be performed and this is how the use case works we have a scope statement specification so imagine uh, the first scenario that we talked about a client came and uh, gave you all the requirements that needs to be implemented for their business and you noted down all the requirements on the notepad and now you want to perform uh, you want to perform a meeting with the development team to understand how and why, uh, you know, why, how, and uh, all the information that uh, this task will, uh, the, the whole implementation will be performed. So we have to create modules. Uh, let me give you a scenario where uh, we have uh, leads, contacts, opportunities. So we have to keep everything detailed in order to, you know, uh, create our spo uh, scope bespoke so that clients uh, go through it very in, in detail uh, always uh, you know mention the pain points of the businesses because that's when they get interested towards uh, reading your proposal make sure to include diagrams uh, flows that we discussed earlier it could be wireframes or you can say screenshots of the website or, or something like that that this all can be done in the scope statement specification next we have wireframes and visual documentation that's uh, that that that's what i mentioned earlier uh, if we have a very huge module that has been implemented, uh, for example, uh, a person is applying for a COVID vaccine, uh, you can say dose, and there is a complete flow. So we can, you know, pro uh, provide a wireframe or a visual documentation to explain the same. Then we have change management. Uh, if uh, there are scenarios where client uh, wants to implement something, but it wasn't covered in the initial requirement meeting. So that's when change management comes into the play. And uh, it could uh, also come into the scenario where you implemented a process. Now client want to slightly change it or maybe completely change it. So that's when change management comes into the process. And we have to document it and uh, provide like how and what processes will be affected after this change and how much time will it take for us to you know perform this change. 
And next, uh, at last, we have uh, RACI chart. RACI stands for uh, Responsible, Accountable, Consulted, and Informed. And uh, these four categories are somewhere very important uh, in a project management or you can say project uh, implementation part. And as a business analyst, uh, we should be aware like who, which person is responsible, which person is accountable. Uh, you can say who is consulted and who should be informed about all this. So this is how they should manage it. Uh, we difference between like how, what is the difference between a Salesforce BA and a Salesforce admin? So just a lot of things about like what Salesforce BA actually does. So you are aware about the fact that it's just a, a bridge between clients and the development team. Let's learn how it is different from like Salesforce admin. So uh, since Salesforce business analyst is, is, is a project based business improvement role, whereas Salesforce administration is an operational role. Salesforce admins work with stakeholders to define optimal processes and customize the Salesforce platform. So these are the persons who are working, you know, as, as an operational role and performing all the changes. They help their companies uh, and users get the most out of it. Salesforce by making the platform work for their business unique needs. And they bring innovations to life, automating business processes, creating reports and dashboards, training users and staying on the uh, top of platform, uh, you know, updates. So in a, in a sum up way, I can say Salesforce admin set, sets up users, security measures and processes, and they maintain data on the Salesforce platform. They are the Salesforce experts within the organization, whereas business analysts use data to plan and oversee Salesforce projects and they apply their knowledge of Salesforce capabilities and limitations to guide the business to the best solution. And they act as the interpreters between IT and business stakeholders. So there are some uh, information uh, that I found from the trailhead, which will uh, definitely help you to understand like what exactly a business analyst or a Salesforce admin does. So I'll note down a few so that we can move ahead and uh, cover up all the presentation by the time. So admin is working as a setup in, setting up a Salesforce org while a business analyst is elicit, uh, you know, documenting requirements. Admin is setting up the users, setting up the org, uh, you know, creating permission sets, maybe assigning uh, users as per the lead assignment rule. So this is how the, all the configuration part uh, is done on the uh, admin end. Whereas business analyst writes user stories to define that implementation. Admin manages sales marketing application, whereas Salesforce business analysts analyze data and draw business insights. Admins manage a uh, service and support application, whereas business analysts uh, facilitate business solutions. Managing activities and collaborations are the task of admins as well, whereas Salesforce business analyst manages Salesforce projects, overall uh, implementation of the projects. Salesforce admins manage data and business analysts create and deliver business presentations because uh, powerpoint presentations are somewhere the best part to uh, visualize and deliver your product to the clients and uh, they really gets impressed if you you know included all the details along with the information and the pain points they really want next admins actually build uh, reports dashboards and other analytics whereas manage uh, business analysts manages and analyzes salesforce implementation Salesforce admins installs packages from App Exchange, while business analysts create uh, user training materials, solve issues during testing. All the part of, about uh, managing sandboxes and production environment comes into the bucket of uh, a Salesforce admin. Also managing the health of the org, training the Salesforce user, and communicating with the stakeholders as well as uh, comes under the Salesforce admins part. Whereas Salesforce business analyst uh, performs the current, understands the current business processes and document processes in development. Some more uh, required skills and the key qualities. So uh, an admin has to have a communication skills, uh, time management skills, leadership skills, and uh, also the pro uh, problem solving skills. Whereas a business analyst should have leadership skills, communication skills, because it plays an important role and also the project management skills because uh, they have to communicate the requirements to developers and get the implemented uh, implementation done from the developers and then 
tell the client that everything has been uh, done from our end. Please test and, uh, you know, let us know your feedback. So this is how a project management skills work. Well, a project management includes a lot of things, honestly, uh, because it, it could be the project progress, project plan, the timeline, the milestones that we are working on. It, it is all decided and sprints also. So uh, we can talk about it, you know, in some other session in the future, like what exactly a Salesforce project manager does. Let's uh, move ahead to key qualities of the Salesforce admin and Salesforce business analyst. So uh, admin has to be empathetic. It sh he should be able to listen and understand the customer needs, request, and if there are any issues, because sometimes a client may burst on you uh, with, with some issue that has occurred on the implementation. And uh, then, uh, you know, you feel uh, frustrated or maybe, you know, angry. You don't have to be feel that. You should be empathetic to receive the feedback uh, in order to, you know, drive smooth communication. Next, uh, admin should be confident, draws the knowledge about the Salesforce platform to argue against the request that aren't in the best interest of the business. So there might be times where as an admin, you know that this feature might affect the business process. So you can, you know, uh, present your uh, questions or you can say present your suggestion to the client confidently with the, you know, a knowledge driven solution to the client that this is how it should be done. Otherwise, it will affect your business process. Uh, next, we have encouraging, so it should drive user adoption. More uh, users should adopt Salesforce uh, admins around, you know, uh, trains and coaches, everyone, so that everybody can, you know, somewhere onboard Salesforce and be comfortable while uh, they are using the Salesforce instance. So as a business analyst, uh, it should be data driven, tracks and evaluates data to provide insights back to the business. It should be action oriented, uh, makes quick actionable recommendations based on the data findings and also solution oriented takes project management requirements and creates the best solution for the organizations. Next, uh, there are some common misconceptions and th these questions uh, might be arising in all of your heads as well. So let me just give you a quick brief on these misconceptions that uh, we might have heard or you can say we feel it. So first, a Salesforce business analyst needs to be super technical. No, we don't have to be super technical. As long as we have the basic understanding of the Salesforce platform, and also we are keeping up with the platform changes, all the releases that are coming up summer, winter, we should be keep up and we have enough knowledge to understand the uh, platform capabilities and the limitations. The technical Salesforce stuff is done by the Salesforce admin. So you don't have to be too much technical. You should be aware about the platform, the limitations, and understand the capabilities like what can be done with the Salesforce for a certain business requirement. Next, very common misconception we have. Salesforce business analysts shouldn't do the configuration on the platform. It's commonly thought that a BA should not do the configuration on the platform because we think that our, 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 an admin should do that. But this is up to an individual. If, if you are aware about the admin, if you know how to set up users, if you know how to set uh, permission, uh, permission sets, permission set groups, assignment rules, if you are aware about this knowledge, if you have skills and bandwidth to do so, you can perform it on your end. And, and this, the more helping hands are better in this scenario because an admin can do the same and also you are capable to do the same. So somewhere admin can, you know, move ahead to the task which requires more time and efforts and you can simply perform and create these on your end. Next, we have sales for business analysts are only needed after a project kicks off. So do we really need a business analyst after a project kicks off? No, it depends. BAs are brought into Salesforce projects from get to get go. Many uh, think that they are needed only after the project kicks off, but getting the initial understanding of needs and scope of a project is one of the most important pieces. So there is a term uh, discovery phase. So what happens uh, in the discovery phase, uh, we uh, keep multiple meetings with the clients where we understand the requirements, where we understand all the questions, all the all the things that a client want us to implement for their business on the Salesforce. And that's when we create our notes and create our initial understanding document after performing a discovery. So that's where we should we should consider the fact that uh, it's it's better to have a business analyst uh, from you know start to the end because initially they can go ahead and understand the requirements so that they feel more comfortable when it comes to communicating in the future and they have whole idea of the implementation because they were there 
since the start. So last we have Salesforce business analysts are only focused on requirements. Well, not sure. So, uh, business analysts aren't solely, you know, focused on requirements. But yes, it plays an important role. It's a big part of what they do. But as we highlighted in the previous section, they do much more and more than that. Because uh, we have to create wireframes based on requirements. We have to be bridge of communication. And apart from that, we have to be updated on the documentation, elicit, continuously ask questions, have feedbacks, you know, keep everything in the loop. And that's the much more that we guys do. So we have completely uh, gone through like what exactly a business analyst is and, uh, you know, how we can uh, start as a business analyst, what exact skills are required. Uh, what uh, duties we perform, what tasks we have to do, like every little detail that the most we can share in a short span of time that we have today that we have covered so far. So now, for example, all the aspirants who are, you know, looking forward to learn more about business analyst certification and how we can do it. I'll provide a brief here, like what uh, exact sections that are uh, coming up in the exam, or you can say what uh, exact modules that we have to read in order to go through the business analyst certification. And anyways, if you have questions apart from any of the thing and we don't get a chance to answer it here, you can connect me on LinkedIn or Twitter. We can definitely start a conversation and I'll help you out in any way possible. So firstly, uh, Salesforce business analyst uh, exam is designed for uh, business analysts who are having Salesforce experience. Okay. So the successful candidate should understand business needs, how to capture the requirements and collaborate with the stakeholders to support the development of Salesforce solution, which drive business improvements. So on the content part, we will be having 60 multiple uh, choice question. The time will be one zero five minutes. Uh, it's passing score is 72%, which is equal to 44%, uh, 44 questions out of 60. Exam fees, we all are aware about. It's standard to $100 and the retake is uh, $100. Prerequisites, uh, we should have Salesforce certified admin credential for giving the Salesforce business analyst exam because it is a required prerequisite from the Salesforce site. So we should be admin certified in order to you know go for a business analyst certification. So important topics for business analyst certifications. There are some uh, things which you might have heard earlier during the presentation. For example, customer discovery, the thing I talked about discovery phase. The next we have collaboration with stakeholders, how we can collaborate with stakeholders. And the more we collaborate, the more uh, smooth the business runs. Next, we have business process mapping. This comes with a picture of, you know, providing a up, you know, a graphical representation or how we can map the business uh, process using various tools or wireframes, or we can say BRDs, diagrams. Next, we have requirements and uh, requirements plays an important role. How we ask the question. This is what uh, requirements are all about, how we elicit it, how many questions we have, what business they are performing, which market they are trying to capture all this. Uh, all this comes under the requirements. Next, we have user stories. As I mentioned, as a Salesforce admin, I will be able to log in into my Salesforce system by using username and password. So this is an example, a basic example of a user story. As a dash, as a user, what I will be able to do and how I will be able to do it. Next up, we have user acceptance, like uh, it's the acceptance criteria that I mentioned earlier, user uh, acceptance criteria, UAT, where we check the implementation that if it is satisfying or, you know, if it is completing the requirement that the client had initially with us. So let's move ahead and uh, get a small picture of all the, uh, all the, you know, weightage of the examinations, like what topics and how they will be covered. Firstly, we have collaboration with stakeholders. It covers like 24% of the exam. It basically has the like planning discovery activities based on the target stakeholders to perform a thorough analysis of the business needs. 
also identifying the key stakeholders for example if a, if a client has a team of 12 people but you only need to communicate with four people in order to understand the salesforce solution that they want so you can identify them and let the client know like i need these four people only during the communication and we can develop a relationship with them as a trusted advisor to act as a liaison between business and our technical teams given a scenario we can choose the most effective technique for eliciting business needs from stakeholders there are uh, various uh, you know uh, you can say eliciting techniques available you can go through uh, the trail mix of the business analyst on the trailet there are various techniques which are mentioned in order to ask questions and understand next we have explained how to move from current state analysis to an agreed future state design so in this manner we understand the current business process and then we provide uh, suggestions to the client for the future understand how salesforce features and the best best practices uh, impact solution options and business processes so in a in a good manner if 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 salesforce implementation is somewhere you know enhancing business uh, of the client you can you can get, uh, you know provide them uh, a document where you can uh, analyze analyze their current system and suggest some features for their future in order to provide a good will, goodwill as an uh, business analyst so that they should know that you are really caring about their business and how their business can uh, you know scale to an extent by your suggestion and that's how you should be open with the communication and next uh, given a scenario we can manage uh, you know competing priorities to obtain sign off from stakeholders as well so this uh, you know this section of the exam is completely uh, co co uh, you know covering the stakeholders part like how we are communicating what documentations we are providing if we need to perform a discovery in a business scenario how we can build relationship and always remember we should be empathetic while we are communicating with the clouds for uh, understanding requirements feedbacks or anything else that it's coming from the clients and the next section we have user stories it acquires 18% of the exam where we understand the components of a user story to perform a thorough analysis where we can contrast the difference between the acceptance criteria versus the definition of done and also document user stories in a version control repository to manage the scope as i mentioned earlier we have to manage all the documentations as much as possible so that we have a repository to know what features we are implementing and how we are doing it and we need to keep track time to time in order to know like i performed some changes a month ago and now i'm aware that i'm performing these changes today three components of a user story this is very important everybody uh, can make a user story out uh, you know when you walk out of this session everybody can make a user story you just have to keep three things who what and why like from whose perspective within salesforce will this user story be written what goal will be accomplished and why the user need the salesforce functionality or a feature so user stories are often expressed in a simple sentence so you can take a screenshot of this and uh, you know you can keep it with you if if whenever it comes to writing a user story just have to as a person as a salesforce admin or as a salesforce user i want to log out of the salesforce so that i can uh, get back to the login page again so you can do it by clicking on the logout button so it's a user story for the logout button example i have as a customer care representative i want to able be able to take ownership of the new cases and communicate with the customers so that i can provide high touch customer experiences so it's a basic example of how can a user story be written next section we have customer discovery so this comes to the elicitation part determine the business strategies goals initiative and challenges to define the scope of the business analysis all the requirements that we learned for our client we have to understand the strategy we have to provide goals we have to provide initiatives and challenges that we will face during the implementations of the requirement we have to discover how a customer is leveraging and benefiting from salesforce product to establish the current state so current business scenario we can understand if this client is uh, already using a salesforce or if if he is a new user we can pitch him like how he can leverage a uh, benefit from a salesforce product and establish the current state and since 
Salesforce is now available for the small businesses as, as well. So we can, you know, pitch it to the small businesses too, because it's very cheap. And for them, it could be, a, you know, a beneficial investment for their business to manage the customer. Next, we have understand and explain business analysts roles and responsibilities in different phases of the implementation life cycle. So this section of exam will ask you questions regarding business analyst roles, responsibilities, and how we will be performing, uh, how what steps we will be taking as per the stages that comes along in the implementation life cycle. Next, we have apply implementation life cycle for planning business analysis activities. So we have created a project plan. We are aware like what steps we have to perform. We have to first implement leads, then go for accounts, contacts, then opportunities. And that's how, you know, create, uh, you create an implementation life cycle. And that's how, you know, business analyst activities work. Next, we have analyzed the customer Salesforce environment to identify the opportunities and the constraints. So this is, uh, I, let me tell you my personal best practice on this. Like, uh, whenever we get a lead, we ask uh, to the client to, you know, give us the time to go through their, uh, you know, initial environment and understand like what they are currently performing in order to provide them uh, the org health or maybe if there are certain features that can be improved if there are certain things which can be automated in order to save time so that's where you know we create a goodwill initially when we ask for the client for the org to perform an analysis and uh, and provide a feedback so that you know it, it's good from our end for and we, we are providing suggestions somewhere to improve their businesses Next, we have uh, demonstrate knowledge of Salesforce capabilities and its potential uh, to recommend a solution to the business. So we have to uh, answer the questions where it might ask the knowledge of Salesforce capabilities, what uh, Salesforce capabilities are, if there are limitations, what can be performed, and uh, its potential to recommend solution to the business and how you're going to, uh, you know, provide a solution to the certain business it could be a practical scenario where a client is asking you a question and you are providing a solution as per your salesforce knowledge next we have requirement gathering it takes 17 percent of the exam it's a dis uh, distinguish between uh, requirements as in user stories to engage businesses and technical stakeholders verify and prioritize existing requirements and identify the new requirements to develop the future state so as I mentioned, if, if a project is running from last one year, so we are uh, uh, regularly verifying and prioritizing existing requirements. And also along the time while we are implementing, we are identifying the new requirements to develop on the future state. And last, we have document requirements in a version control repository to manage scope so that uh, we, we should be aware about the fact that what, uh, what are the documents that we created. There could be multiple versions sometime. You know, uh, there are times where I have to create seven or six, uh, seven or eight versions of a single document because we were continuously having meetings with the client, understanding the requirement, and we are creating the new versions so that we have a repository at the end where uh, I can classify initially in the first meeting, I had these requirements and later on I came along with these requirements. Next, we have business process mapping. It covers like 16% and this criteria will involve are uh, demonstrating how to define the scope of a complex business process and break it down into manageable steps. We will create a, maybe a diagram or uh, you can say uh, break down a task into certain modules so it looks manageable uh, and it can be done with, with the required timeline. We can apply understanding of the hierarchical process mapping to engage stakeholders at different levels of organization. So we should be aware about organization, uh, you know, account, uh, account hierarchy. We should be able to set up, configure and understand like how we can, you know, create stages uh, like as a C, uh, uh, we have a CEO, then we have a general manager, then we have a team leader, then we have a project manager, then we have a BA. We should know the hierarchical process mapping uh, to engage the stakeholders. Uh, next, we have analyze and document a business process to uh, uh, process to elicit requirements and identify resources to visualize a future state. So uh, analyzing and documenting a business process is really important while we are asking the questions to the clients and uh, resources which we can visualize in order to provide a future state solution to, to our respective clients. 
we can apply governance on uh, agreed future state processes to you know control the scope there could be uh, certain features which require limitations from it end to end. Uh, and uh, we can apply uh, uh, governance and agreed feature state to you know, uh, control the scope accordingly. And uh, then we have user acceptance. It covers the 8% of the exam. Here, uh, we will perform, define, and prepare the user acceptance test plan to confirm the solution meets the business requirement. So simply, uh, if I say uh, I created a field for you where you can put the address, so it's uh, the acceptance criteria that it's necessary to put the to put the you know email address in the field, and that's where we can define the user acceptance criteria. We can perform guide in UAT and manage the results to determine whether the solution meets the requirement. Given a scenario, make a go no go release decision when a new business or a technical issue uh, issues arises. So these are the certain topics which are covered under the user acceptance. And uh, I think uh, this was the last uh, criteria that we have covered so far. And uh, I would request uh, everyone uh, to join our marketer group part out Vijayawada. The link is under the description and also on the page where you RSVP from. And uh, I really appreciate uh, you, you guys' patience for hearing me out throughout the session. And uh, I hope uh, you guys learned, uh, got to learn a lot of things from this session. And I'm expecting some questions from here as well. So please uh, let us know and uh, some, put the questions in the chat. And I would be more than happy to provide the answers for the same. Thank you, everyone, for being such an audience, audience uh, amazing audience. Uh, thanks, Gaurav. Uh, you know, it was a wonderful session where you covered a lot of stuff. In fact, you know, starting from what's the role of a business analyst, you know, uh, I, I believe uh, most of the slides, initial slides till the, uh, uh, you know, till the certification, you have covered a lot of stuff, uh, which is pretty useful even for the examination purpose. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let's see if there are any questions. Venkat Ram says he has a question. Uh, Venkat, you can drop the question in the chat. Please feel free to ask any questions. Uh, if you had any doubts on certain terms or universal terminologies, anything, you can go ahead. It seems there's a question. Okay. Uh, uh, you have around three plus experience uh, of admin experience. Can I get a chance to move as a BA? Yes, definitely. So uh, as we uh, you know mentioned earlier, a Salesforce business analyst, uh, analyst is basically a business analyst with Salesforce skills. And somewhere uh, you mentioned that you have three plus years of admin experience. It's It is somewhere uh, falling under in your favor. You can apply uh, you, if you are good at communication, if you are good at, you know, understanding the requirements, you you can apply for a business analyst. It's a good uh, criteria. And also you uh, all throughout the session, we talked about the roles and responsibilities that a business analyst uh, have to perform. And uh, if you are comfortable with doing all these things, you can definitely uh, go for the business analyst role. And uh, if you need any more information or help, uh, you can, you know, contact me outside the platform on the LinkedIn or Twitter, maybe. And I, I'll guide you for the same if you really want to, you know, pursue the business analyst career. So uh, thanks for the question, uh, Akhilesh. So are there any tools used as a BA and the one should be aware of? Okay. So I'll, I'll let's talk about what, what tools I use in my day-to-day -day life. So I... I come, I come to office and I open up the word pad, uh, the word, because the word is the most important tool that we have to use. And if I talk about uh, Excel by PowerPoint presentations, and there are lots of tools that uh, you know we have to come across, and all the features that I mentioned. For example, uh, we are creating you know uh, wireframes. We are creating uh, you can say flows. Uh, we have to create pictorial flows. So I mostly I use Draw.io and uh, to create the flows because it's easy and it's free and you can create flow charts very easily 
and you know we can customize them as well and apart from that also uh, you should have a good command I, I would suggest to have a good command on microsoft office because a business analyst have to be good at word good at powerpoint presentations uh, it should be good at uh, you know creating excel sheets because uh, under the excel sheets we have to create project plans you know gantt charts the documents that we discussed earlier project milestones these are like the basic tools we have to use and if you want to you know enhance more towards it there are many free tools available you know to create wireframes to create you know uh, business process mapping diagrams how uh, you want to do it it depends on you there are more uh, more there are multiple options available for the same yeah so one question that mm -hmm. pallavi is asking need to know just how many opportunities does it open up for this role as compared to a developer so um okay that's a great question uh the current uh scenario that uh, we are going through right now we are expecting to have a rise in the demand of business analysts as uh, these people are expected to be the communication part because a uh, business analyst journey starts you know starts as an admin we are an admin initially we learn how admin works then we are having a good communication and documentation skills then we move on to the business analyst part then after being a business analyst for 2 to 3 years you can move on to the project management so you can become sales for project manager as well because all along if you are interested in coding as well so you can be sales force consultant parallelly so in this scenario i just want to tell you that you can start as a business analyst the companies prefer business analyst because they have a wider perspective of having diverse roles in an organization they can become project managers in the future initially when they start as a business analyst they can manage manage small projects and when they are good at it you can you know provide them uh, some big project and they can dedicatedly handle it so that's where uh, an organization can see a growth from a single resource so i'm i'm expecting you know uh, i've heard like a lot of companies are now coming up and uh, they are putting up this hybrid model work from home and other things so it brings a lot of opportunities for business analysts as uh, but developers also stands their place because we cannot fight with developers as we are not good at the technical part and on the coding side as well but it does uh, opens a lot of opportunities definitely and um to uh akhilesh uh yes uh, i would like to mention some more tools as well uh, i hope pallavi i answered your question if you have any doubt please let me know uh akhilesh we can uh on the project management part there are uh, multiple tools called monday.com uh it's uh there is one at lashi and jira these are the tools where uh, we can you know collaborate with clients we can bring clients on board on jira or maybe monday.com we can create tickets uh, where a client is also aware about what work we are doing client knows who, who which person is the uh, is the uh, responsible for this work is it the developer is it the ba or is it the tester in this way we create a clear picture and you know a, a good you know open collaboration with our stakeholders and it really helps in managing the project so this these tools were on the project management side rest uh, were on the you know wireframing and documentation part Pleasure, Akhilesh. Let me know, guys, if you have any further questions. Uh, so, what exactly does a functional consultant do differently than project management, Pallavi? So, you know, they try to define for what requirement, what kind of a Salesforce product suits and also you know uh, whether that particular product of salesforce is gonna you know match that particular requirement completely or do that require a bit of customization on top of that okay such kind of things a functional consultant can uh, define okay project management is only managing the project completely from end to end like sprint planning uh, or probably you know uh, sprint design okay Okay, so 
okay guys so if there are no questions then let's wrap up it's almost time thank you so much Gauro, for your session today it was really wonderful and uh, we're looking forward for more such sessions in our group i would like to thank you everyone for being patient throughout the session and uh, looking forward to see you soon in the upcoming sessions thank you all for joining today have a great day ahead bye bye thank you everyone